ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special edition of Chalk Talk. I am your co-host, Andre C. Right over here is my regular co-host, the wonderful, the, ev- the ever effervescent Princess Melball, and our very special guest, gracing us with their presence all the way from Orlando, making the trip up to Edmonton. It's the queen of OLE. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Astro Pizarro is on Chop Talk. Yes. Yeah. In the flesh, you see. In the flesh, she's poking me. It's not a ghost. It's not my Peter. <laughs> Andre, we have had an amazing couple of days. Astrid arrived late Thursday night. Mm-hmm. I picked her up from the airport. We took her to some to her first ever independent wrestling show and her first ever Canadian independent wrestling show on friday yeah. night took a to another one on saturday afternoon we had some fun there that we'll talk about in another video but man oh mm-hmm. man queen was popular yes, well she, known. she is very well known andre how are you doing today I- i'm doing all right i had a nice relaxing day watch some football uh downloaded some wrestling to watch after we do recordings tonight so i can get caught up in my new japan pro wrestling but yeah yes. Yes. i think that's probably what we're gonna do when we get off of here is watch some njpw uh, <laughs> yeah I, I all i know is i predict well that's all i know <laughs> i'm pretty I can, sure i did too i know i i can predict the future that's all i know <laughs> i know I, I, th- I think i did too in one situation Probably, probably. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk know, about it when I, we get there. I know I did, but we're not here to talk that. We're here to talk uh, LP. Def- Man, I was trying to remember what show we're ta- talking about here. LPW thirty flirty and thriving. That, that is the name of this show. Thirty flirty and thriving. Uh, before we do that, I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in here, whether it's on Andre Mobile Wrestling Talk, whether it's on Backbreaker Video. Thank you so very, very much. Yeah, just dance, dance. <laughs> Dance, dance. Thank you so much for joining us uh, here. We appreciate it. Please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Uh, don't forget to share it with your friends, family, and those who travel out of the country to go see their friends. And uh, don't forget to hit that uh, notification bell so you can be mm-hmm. alerted every time we drop a new video. Do you want to do it with me? Mm-hmm. Ding dong. <laughs> We should do like baby. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Good day. Good morrow to you, sir. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna get in. We're gonna talk some LPW. Let's go. LPW 30, flirty, and thriving. Uh at the, at the rec room South Common in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And when well, we kicked it, uh, actually, no, hold well, on. I'm gonna back up. We kicked it off with a true, with a sad uh, thing off the top. Uh, mm-hmm. Just a few days ago, a local independent wrestler uh, Vince Austin uh, passed away. Um, friend, of, a friend of mine for many years, uh, and worked mm-hmm. with him many times in the RCW locker rooms and others. Just oh, I hate. But Ben Omen and Thaddeus Archer the Third came out, giving both giving beautiful speeches. Uh, tributes mm-hmm. to their friend and uh, Thaddeus leading the hush, hush, hush mm-hmm. with, to the, with the crowd. So, yeah, it was very, very sweet, very moving, very heartwarming. I was doing my best not to cry. Freaking dad mm-hmm. got me. So oh, they're like, God. damn it. Oh. He, almost, he, almost, he almost got me. He almost got me. He got me. Got me. Yeah. What a nice little tribute to start off the show. Yeah, I wasn't totally sure, but I'm like, I'm like, okay, enough of those guys there worked with Vince. I know a lot. He's affected almost every locker room in this province mm-hmm. and the surrounding provinces and across this country. Um, I was like, there's no way they don't do a tribute. And it was really nice to see them do the tribute off the hop. So, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Nice. All right, Pete Vince, baby. We're going to get into it. We're going to talk it. We kicked it off with the Paralyr coming out and uh, getting on the mic and getting and annoying Spencer, uh, pissing him mm-hmm. off because they came out. Uh, they are it's Paralyr, they are jacked and juicy. 
uh, Sheik Akbar Shabazz and uh, Birak Garani. I love the new shirts. I want one. They just didn't have any in my size. Certified something. Pardon? There's a, another thing at the bottom of it. Remember, it was like thick and juicy and certified something. Oh, I don't know. It jacked and juicy and I don't know. What was it? Let me now they're now what now Jack's gonna yell at me for not <laughs> he is and rightfully so. <laughs> the only shirt I know for sure of his is one that says space uh fly with me, which is his, uh, the space his space man shirt. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> yeah. Uh taking on the team of U L T Casey Fiera and Maxwell Benson. Mm -hmm. who we were chanting Slim Shady and Marshall Mathers at. <laughs> he did kind of give, he had the, the blonde vibes. I got it. I saw it. Yeah, his, his whole look was very rip-off Slim Shady. Not, 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 not mean, but again, it was like a Slim Shady rip-off, mm -hmm. the hair and the look. And again, it's, it's a general look he has that gives off that, especially with the short hair. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. there's this great, this great spot early on. Uh, with ULT sending uh, Paralier over the top. Uh, uh, and now uh, Maxwell Benson hits a toe play while Casey Ferrer hits the springboard moonsault. And the, and Casey and Birat land on the children. Was uh, this was where yeah. we started the phrase weaponize the children for the night. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Weaponize the children. Uh, there's a really cool. Uh, there's a really awesome sling blade heart attack by uh, ULT. And, uh, I, yeah. Yeah. Is that the, the German kind of sling blade looking thing? Well, it's, it's the heart attack, and Kate, like Benson had him up like a spine buster. Then, then yeah, uh, yeah. It's, yeah, that looked great. And then uh, Casey oh, came yeah, around yeah. with the sling blade. Yeah, that looked really good. Mm -hmm. um, and they followed up with like a sick kick and brain buster combo. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, yes. I was like, oh, yes. A um, couple other spots in this match. Uh, uh, Mac, uh, Casey was doing this flippy-dippy all around the ring into this beautiful satellite DDT to Sheik, which was great. Oh, yeah. The flippity-dippity, uh, as Mel would say. <laughs> the flippity-dippity. Uh, uh, they uh, Paralier hit that uh, torture rack and flips, and then he flips him over Birat, and Birat hits a spine buster, uh, or uh, the Alabama slam. Like he pops one to shoulder and he slams him out. I love that move. Yes, uh, yeah, at the end of this match, though, uh, ULT fight off the reverse murder, but and uh, they get the superplex to Sheik, uh, who is on top uh, on the top rope going for the Houston hangover instead of. Birat and uh, they hit the superplex to him. Casey hits the frog splash. Uh, Birat takes out the ref, and then they end up hitting the camel toss. Uh, I think it was to Benson, and they hit the running and 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 uh, Birat hits the running into Guri, and Paralira gets the win. Mm -hmm. um, real quick, just not unexpected. I mean, that Paralira has been a very dominant tag team. Um, the last. Last little while, I feel they don't get as much attention as some of the other tag teams in in LPW, but they've been sure fighting for that spotlight, and I appreciate the uh, entertainment that we've gotten in the meantime. Still waiting on B Rat Sparkle Boots. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. We need them. <laughs> They'll be perfectly matched at that point. Yes, that's very true. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I enjoyed this match too. It was a good introduction to both teams too, and. I believe it was Casey. He gives me such a vibe, so like Ace Austin, but also a little bit of like, uh, I forgot what was the other person I mentioned as well, but it's like between like ABC and he, he has such a like, like his speed was so well done. It was hard to like take my eyes off of him. Oh, the Rascals was the other people that I mentioned, like Trey Miguel. He gives me like a combination of all of those. And it was so great to see him in person doing that. It was very nice. I, I thought it was a team of Prince and Slim Shady. So <laughs> that's what I thought of the ULT as. Mm -hmm. The mashup we knew, didn't know we needed. <laughs> yep. So we move on to your second match tonight, and it was w the War of the Reds, Lumberjack Larry Woods versus Rich King. I, I knew where I was standing in this one. It was I was all behind Rich King here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting after these guys came out. 
to see the odd difference in support because when larry was going for the grand championship holy hot diggity was the crowd unquestionably behind him but in this one it really felt like the crowd was unquestionably behind rich king it's very very interesting we still did a larry's bald spot chant though mm. because oh, yeah. we needed you have to. to you have to like you just have to yeah also, real quick before we get into it, and so we get it out of the way, fucking Larry. Astrid? There we go. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, oh, <laughs> no, I'll just swear on our channel. She, she, she was saying at the show, she kept going, fucking Larry. She, she was yeah. yelling at the show. I only did it once. <laughs> <laughs> if you missed it, you missed it. See? It's priceless <laughs> like that. I did get it on video. I think Kat has it. Yeah. Yeah, so they're like shoving each other and like and like just tossing each other, locking up and throwing the the other. Both going through their finishes early. Uh, Larry at one point misses the Bronco Buster, and Rich goes to like stomp him, but then like holds up and just says, "No, I'm just gonna do a suplex instead." Instead of like stomping his face into the mat, he decides to just give him a suplex. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. he's still got a little bit of love for his boy. A uh, great final beat DDT for Rich. Didn't kick any fans doing it this time. Mm-hmm. Not, I'm, I'm talking like ceiling fans. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Rich, never gonna live that one down. That was yeah. tremendous. Yeah. Um, the saw line gets reversed into the Olympic slam. That's reversed into a roll up for Larry for two. Great, just great sequence there. Uh, uh, the end of the uh, the end of the match. Larry reverses an eight six seven driver into the bridging pin. And he sneaks out the win. Odd again, reaction from the crowd because they were so solidly behind Rich. It was kind of like, it's like, oh no. Um, the emotion and intensity in this match was just so good. And both these guys, I've been begging for promos, begging for promos. Both of these guys put out promos for this, and I just, I ate. Everybody's been putting out promos all over Alberta lately. I am kind of living for it and trying to, like, sort through the ones I like the most to share on my stories. Because, gosh dang, people are starting to really put some effort into it. Um, Yeah. Astrid, what do you think? Oh. What I loved about this match more than anything was the storytelling here. Mm-hmm. The fact that you get so many times that Rich is just like, oh, I want to hit him, but I'm hesitating. And that's what cost him the match in the end. It's like I used it. It was a part of like towards the corner where he thinks about it. And when he thinks about it, that gives Larry the time to obviously do not not basically avoid him to put it like that. And seeing that type of storytelling between them as friends. And even at the end, when people are telling them to like hug it out and shake their hands, and even with that hesitation there, I was like, that was something that I was like, oh, so that's it. are we gonna get a turn here? Because that would have been, I was, I don't want to say interesting because something you can see happen if it does happen, but it would have been cool to see it happen there, just when Larry's turning his back on Rich, and then that happens. But again, the storytelling is what I love the most about this match: the fact that we get those hesitation moments from from Rich uh, towards Larry, but Larry doesn't hesitate when he does anything to Rich. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I again, I've been a fan of Rich forever, a uh, friend of mine, and he is like his storytelling is so underrated. He does such a good job. Same with Larry, just the way they just told this together. And then the post match with TY showing up, telling them to shake hands, like they were kind of getting into it. Uh, Rich was shoving Larry, and he was like, No, you guys, this is you said one match, and then whoever wins, it doesn't matter. And they, they, they. Larry put the shake up, but uh, Rich ended up hugging him. And I, I think I preemptively wrote this. I wrote Rich hits Larry because I was expecting him to. So mm-hmm. I wrote it down on my phone just preemptively, but he didn't. So I was like, oh, mm-hmm. good. I, I was well, kind I of speculate hoping. on that, though. I was I'm not that. entirely sure it's not going to happen. Hmm. Because again, back to the storytelling of Rich, when they left together, T.Y. and Larry were the first through the curtains. Rich was still out there, and he did that slow turn to the audience. There was a very not rad expression on his face. Mm -hmm. So I'm not entirely sure that we're not going to see Rich hit Larry at some point. It just wasn't this night. 
I, I, I'm not, I wouldn't be against it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Larry. I'm, 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 I'm in the rich camp here. It's all, everything was Larry's fault. It's all Larry's fault. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can't deny that. He stole the title shot from T.Y. That was meant for T.Y. He took the title. Um, they, before that, he cost Rich his opportunity with that distraction with the beard. And then he took the title. I mean, it's not to say that Rich doesn't have reason to be upset with Larry. Larry's Larry's kind of kind of Larryed this year a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Larry, Larry's kind of a jerk this year. We well, we were not going to say what Larry was what as a verb. We'll just leave it. At <laughs> oh, we move on. Third match of the show. It's for the uh, LPW Tag Team Champions Chips. It is Ride or Die versus the team of Reloaded, the Prince of Pop Tarts, Jackie Lee, and Sharif Morrow. <laughs> yes, these guys are so good. Oh, dude, the fact that his nickname is the Prince of Pop-Tarts just, just makes me happy. Same. Same. Yeah, just an all-out crazy bro. Everybody's attacking each other early on. Uh, they get Crow into, like, the Shattered Dreams position in the corner at one point and end mm -hmm. up running partner into into his balls. And, and then yeah. they... And then they get they get the other half of Ryder die in on uh, uh, putting Shattered Dream in the other corner and run him it, battle ram style into into partner. Just... We called that the nom nom ram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nom 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 nom. Jesus. Oh. Oh. oh what a move. Wrestling. Yeah, just, just the the utter athleticism of both Jackie and Sharif were just out of this world, man. There's a beautiful rolling thunder frog splash by uh, Sharif in the match. So good. So mm -hmm. good. Um, they, there's this beautiful and so, like in, they get crow seated in the ropes, like looking like he's going to take a nasty German and mm -hmm. they hit this and Siguri from the apron into a backstabber uh, like from the ropes. Yeah. So good. So good. The creativity those two have for their moves is just crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's a beautiful double foot stomp off the top into the pat with the package pile driver on Crow. The ref gets pulled out. Uh, Jackie gets distracted by, by everything going down. Crow gets a low blow. And then Ryder or die hit their gory special flatliner combo and get the win. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Ashford, do you want to go first on this one? I'll say it for me, uh, Reload. This was my introduction to Reloaded, and I, I enjoy their chemistry as a tag team there as well. It just reminds me a lot of, like, kind of like the machine guns in that aspect. They're like, it's that, like, I call it like, the unspoken kind of chemistry because you don't you don't know how they communicate with each other. They just do in such a way that it's so flawless, and there's the quickness. It helps out as well in that aspect. So I get, it just made me so happy to see them live and see that. That kind of pacing to it that was incredible to watch but yeah this was very fun i i love seeing them uh wrestle and to see just the experience that they have as, as a team here because you can tell that they they have such a chemistry together it was hard to like to, you know to take that out of it in the match mm -hmm. i agree the, the fluidity between the two of them was so good it enabled them to just effortlessly flow from one thing into the next it was very like I would compare it to the that effortless communication of like LIJ, where they just know each other so well that it just next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. It was so I don't want to say perfect, but it was like it was as close to as we could have managed. Um, Parents of Pop Top was Pop Tarts is definitely my favorite uh, of the two, though. I just he's so happy. He wrestles exactly like how this picture was. He just had a smile on his face the whole time. It was so great. I hope they come back again. I think this is the second time. I know I've seen um, um, Jake. Jackie. Like that. Yeah, Jackie, sorry. Yeah, was was Shreve here the, the other time that he was here? Yeah, they were here because they were a trio with um, right, Liza right. Hall. 
with loads of holes. Right. Yeah. 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 It's a very fun tag team. I really enjoy them. Yeah. And then post match, uh, Ryder and I start to attack, but Zoe Sager running out to stop the beatdown takes out Crow mm -hmm. and reloaded, hit the EVP trigger. <laughs> Or, or the golden trigger. It could be called the golden trigger, too. That's what the original called. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Jay versus Murphy. And we'll, and, and we'll see where this whole thing goes with, uh, with Doe Sager getting involved here. Because mm -hmm. her partner is injured, and it seems like injured for a while. So. Yeah, yeah. Thickness on crutches for the evening. We're. We're gonna have to kind of wait and see how that kind of goes. Um, yeah, well, yeah, that's a kind of an odd thing for someone to to do in that situation, especially with the numbers game with clandestine mm -hmm. and the lack of numbers that she has. But I, again, like she, we have you know these two guys making up for it, reloaded, making up for it in thickness's absence this night anyway, um, which was well at least good in this situation, this particular yeah. part of the night. Um, the yes. later part of the night, not so much. <laughs> yeah. So as uh, uh, Ryder Die are crawling out of the ring, uh, Michael Richard Blaze makes his entrance, and you can mm -hmm. see he's very disappointed in them getting their asses kicked after the match. He, he was not happy with that. You, you mm -hmm. could tell. Um, so they, and then so we get into the next match, and it is for the LPW Challenge Championship. It is Michael Richard Blaze versus T. Y. Jackson, dude. This was just insanity, man. Blaze attacking T. O. at the belt right off the hop uh, during his entrance, chokes him with his coat, hits that corner knee, and then uh, sends T. Y. out and hits the plancha, brings him back in for the four fifty, and hits his kneecap brain burst. He's doing his whole everything he does, and then T. Y. fights back, fighting off uh, the final consecration toasted bagel. And this is where T.Y. like gets in here, uh, hits a hits a beautiful Tobe Suicida, uh, gets the mm -hmm. O face ring setting blaze back out, and this is where he hits that Tope con Hilo over the top mm -hmm. chest. Just so good. Uh, so good and on point too. Yeah, they're just so good. Um T.Y. at one point uh, misses the disaster kick. MRB gets strikes into that just Sick looking spine buster. Yeah, I like me a spine buster. God dang. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, uh, he like goes uh, to the apron and he goes to leap for his kick, but he slips and he hurts his knee in the match. I was mm -hmm. like, okay. And Blaze just went in on that leg, dragon screws mm -hmm. and knee bars and, and heel hooks and everything, just working that leg, man. It was crazy. Um, he bites the knee pad for some reason, which I was super confused by. How does that affect don't you the put knee? Put it in your mouth. Don't you put it in your mouth? Don't stuff it in your face. <laughs> um, and he gets the shoot like the lion tamer style sharpshooter, then grabs the other arm, pulling it almost like a sharpshooter bow and arrow. Uh, but T.Y. ends up biting Blaze's hand to get out of it. Uh, um, yeah. Don't you put it in your mouth. Yeah. Uh, T.Y. Uh, catches a super kick by Blaze, but Blaze ends up stopping a sliced bread attempt. Uh, Blaze drop kicks the knee, then picks him up. Final consecration. And Mike Roger Blaze is still your LPW Challenge Championship. Then he goes to the outside and rips up a kid's sign. Yeah. Weaponize the children. <laughs> it's an overall theme through this thing. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> This it was an overall theme this weekend, actually. Since <laughs> we're yeah, bringing it up. Um, Astrid, do you want to go first on this one? <laughs> what can I this one though? I wish it would have had some kind of stipulation to it because I know we had a last man standing match as the main event, but I feel like it needed something in that type 
a stipulation just because there were so many things going on outside i feel like it would have benefited from that as well but i understand why it also wasn't a part of it and again i the selling here from ty for the knee injury was so well done and at one point i was like uh, is this going to continue are they going to stop this match or what's going on here but also i like from mrb the moment that the injury like the injury is happening the way he targets it it's such a way that throughout the rest of the match like you know what it's happening i'm going for it and that was his target all along and that storytelling that was also very detailing that i enjoyed watching from both of them and again this was one of those that i enjoyed this match so much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i agree yeah, ty is one of my favorites he's always that happy kind of personality regardless if he's a heel or face or regardless if he where he is he always brings that same energy it's just usually kind of the verbiage is kind of different this one he was a little bit more serious and i've noted that we saw him a bit more serious at the last rcw show that we went to um in the tag match with rich against dnt is that what they were dtn dtn yeah DTN. power rangers <laughs> yeah D D the dtn <laughs> rangers yeah. yeah the dtn rangers yeah yeah they were great but we definitely saw T.Y. kind of starting to kind of walk down that kind of little bit more savage kind of T.Y. We saw this kind of continue in this match against uh, MRB. And to be honest, I mean, best person to bring it out against. He has been on fire for a hot minute. He's been aggressive for quite some, nearly a year now. That MRB has, has been this aggressive variation of himself. Um, it's good to see the... the people the faces like the rads like ty like larry having to step up to that with their their peppiness and personality but it's good to see that they're starting to step up and match that that savagery in that level yeah i agree uh we ended up getting a video uh, uh where is mm -hmm. eli where is eli Ch video which was interesting to see there <laughs> and then we went to intermission and uh mel met rich king or, or, or astrid met rich king sorry you used to I say mean, mel I did technically show. too i never technically ago. met him either i just seen him on the show so you know <laughs> but astrid, getting her getting her pic getting her picture with her favorite lpw superstar yeah it happens it happens you redeemed yourself after the other one it's okay <laughs> oh, oh no 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 that i've i've got that coming up don't worry i, I that that's coming up don't worry I, I, it, it, hold on. Mm -hmm. you, you better bring that up too oh yeah yeah because oh, it explains I, your new nickname yeah i, I, I was say he didn't even get, put it on screen this time he should have not yet it's I coming don't, i don't know how to do that i don't know how to do that i don't know how to make it pop up uh i don't know how to make it do that uh -oh. And, oh, there it is. Well, uh, next time. Found it. Hey, yes, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's going to be fun. Guys. Yeah, that's going to be a name for there, quite a I bit fixed, of time. I, sorry. Yay. I, I fixed your guys. So we, we move, come back from intermission and we get a uh, women's match. It is a Zoe Tiger versus the former IWS Women's Championship, a promotion I have gone and seen a couple times when I visited Montreal. Katrina Creed, this match was awesome. Yes. Yes, yeah. it was. I yeah, fell in uh, love with this woman as soon as her music hit. <sighs> Uh, you can't go wrong when you pick a band like in this moment to come out to, but Adrenalize was just so perfect for her and her energy. It just, ah, uh, take us into it, Andre, Mr. Two Thirds. Yeah. Uh, like this is on commentary because he, he came out with Zoe. He went to commentary because he needs to sit, sit down. Mm -hmm. Can't be on that, that bad knee. Really good. Man. I thought they were really good. Really good on uh, overall. Uh, Creed reverses Zo a move on Zoe and hits this nasty looking backstabber, um, and then just gets on mm -hmm. top of her, just raining down, down punches, and then gets a two count. Just really good. Uh, Zoe reverses a suplex and 
I'm pretty sure she had a brain buster here because it looked like she spiked her more than just suplexed her. It on did that. kind of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I agree. Great spot. Zoe flipping off the shoulders of Katrina Creed and hits that beautiful scorpion kick that she does. Uh, the Dakota mm -hmm. Kai style scorpion kick. Um, then hits the hell, the hell of a kick in the corner. And then that gets that corner uh, seated running boot to the face. Um, this is good stuff. Cree with this she comes back a little bit later with this huge spear. Like it just looked like she killed her. Um yeah. Um mm -hmm. uh, getting the Ushi Garoshi at one point. I was like, yeah. I marked out for that. Yeah. One. yeah I marked out. Yeah. Um Zoe ends up sending uh Creed out to the floor. Uh like kind of like uh she ran into the corner, she like Lift Zoe lifted her leg and double stomped her down into the mat, and Creed rolled out. And then uh, Zoe hits this low pay to the floor. She gets a drop kick off the top, coming back in. And she's going for the win. Ride or die show up, but Zoe ends up hitting uh, Crow with the Oblivion. But Creed ends up hitting a spear out of nowhere to Zoe and rolls her up for the win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I really appreciated also about her spears is they gave me like Thecla vibes. Where Thecla does that kind of spear and the roll through. I was like, ooh, she's as aggressive and savage as at Thecla. And you know how much I love me some Thecla. Uh, mm -hmm. That woman is everything I want to be. <laughs> oh, man. This was a great match. Very consistent. They flowed so well together. And like, I don't know if they've worked together before, but it sure cut just the way they worked together. It felt like they had worked each other before. They seemed to know each other very, very well. Um, yeah, I had a great time with this one. Astra, what do you think? I was say, first time I see former guest of Astrid as Zoe Zager in person. Um, I had seen stuff from Katrina before as well. So it was nice to see her like wrestle in person. And she's so, so hard hitting. It was nice to see that happening there as well. And the way that Zoe took everything. It was just incredible to watch and the chemistry they have with each other, like the way Mel was saying, it's like they flowed so well together, the fast pace of it. And just Katrina look, looks like such a badass to, during this match. Just, I couldn't help it. I knew after the, it happened, I knew I had to go say something about the match itself when we saw her. Because, I again, she did such an incredible job. And for anybody that's the first time seeing her, she 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 did so great. Like that was a great introduction for anybody. I had seen stuff from her like online here and there, but obviously being the first time I see her live, it was just obviously it's totally different from seeing it in, in online. And again, she did so great. And so it's you know the way she wrestles is just so it's so, it flows so well with her fast pace, and I just loved it. And the way she was playing off with the crowd and getting reactions from everybody around her as well, and getting the energy from the crowd to keep going with it. I I love this match a lot too. <laughs> and, and and just to realize that Zoe, but at the start of this year, Zoe was getting booed out of the building, and now she's the. Yeah, I was just gonna say the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy that she's now one of the no, top continue, baby continue. It's it's just funny that she's the top bait, one of the top right? good guys now. It just it's it's such a shift, and I'm like, I can't help but cheer for her now because the crowd is just weirdly infectious, and I've booed Zoe even when she was a good guy before. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's weirdly infectious that you want to cheer for Zoe now. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's been some kind of character development in there somehow or confidence change in there that's mm -hmm. just created this. I feel like she works better with the crowd as a face. Her, her heel stuff, her trying to beak with the crowd, it just, she's too cute. You can't take it take it as seriously. Whereas like with a face, this is something that comes very natural to her and she can utilize that to her advantage. If she ever goes, you know, heal again, I'd actually love to see her do the fake good girl thing. Keep up with the peppiness and, and try to just be an arrogant bitch about it. <laughs> oh, so like so she's gonna be Charlotte. All right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Oh, poor form, sir. Poor form. I, 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 I'm Show kidding. That thing. was that was that was that. I'm just kidding. It's just the. <laughs> <laughs> Show us your shame now. Show us your shame. Come on, shame, shame, shame. I don't, shame. I don't really have shame though. Uh, <laughs> so ride or die in the ring, Zoe. Uh, 
it come, they come out to the ring. Zoe fights them. Blaze shows up hitting a spine buster. R- ride or die, I'll beat her up. Thickness makes his way out on his crutches. Um, he hits Blaze with the crutch. Uh, he ends up stopping the attack, but uh, stopping the attack. But then Crow chop blocks his bad knee. Uh, they put the knee in the chair and st- Crow stomps it. And then Zoe has to like climb over to save them. And mm-hmm. yeah. And then the refs and uh, the the crew all all arrive, and we thought one of our friends is one is one of the crew members. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Carly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting way to kind of end uh, this one. It certainly shows the more strengthened relationship between Zoe and Thickness. Mm-hmm. How Zoe was was trying to cover the knee. That's not something that we would have seen her doing when she was a heel. She would have been standing on the outside, clutching her title, going, "Oh my god." So, like, it, it's a very nice kind of change in dynamic for her. It's a very interesting uh, expansion on the whatever story that is they're going to start with that. Um, and, yeah, uh, interesting way to kind of remove thickness also kind of from the storyline with the knee injury. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we move on to the main event of the evening. And, yes, I will get to the two-thirds after the show because that's when it happened. That's why I was saying show the shame. <laughs> I, I, I'm not ashamed. I'm just sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, we have Mars the Specialist defending his LPW Grand Championship against <laughs> Pride. With that, he starts to the third in a last man standing match. Just crazy. They, like, they go to that floor right, pretty much right away. Uh, Mars gets a double underhook suplex, uh, sending Pride onto the top of the fan chairs, and that looked just ah. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, Pride, I think Pride got a spinning neck breaker off of the apron onto the floor. It just looked like hang, like he was hanging him off the apron and hit it. I was like ah, just ah. Um, <laughs> Pride like putting. Or they, they were fighting all up, fought, fighting behind us. There's like Pride literally kicked Mars down the stairs and he went tumbling to the ground. Oh. That was some Mayu Iwatani ish right there, wasn't it, Andre? <laughs> yeah. Um, Pride pulls out, uh, I guess, Spencer's old furniture and starts leaning old, Spencer's old shelving units in the corner, like each piece of, of one of Spencer's old shelving units in the corners. And uh, then he starts Didn't they like, start an Ikea chant. <laughs> yeah. We, did, we were standing <laughs> Ikea. It was great. Uh, Pride tosses Mars into one. He goes into, he's tossing in the other one, but it doesn't break. Pride just takes it and hucks it out of the ring because he's all pissed. And then he literally lawn darts Mars through the third one. It was just, mm-hmm. Oh, that was a co- uncomfortable watching him do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Just, ah. Uh, um, this is a great spot. They, they end up fighting. They go with the ken- uh, prize starts get some tight in the ropes and start just whacking him with a kendo stick right into the midsection. Uh, mm-hmm. Mars gets out and fights back with the kendo sticks and just, just unloads the broken kendo stick on Pride. It's just crazy until Pride ends up rolling out and Mars hit a Tope Suicida. Just crazy. They're back. They're back to the ring. Mars gets a spear to pry through the final shelf in the corner. It was just, it was just and and just it's it, it just keeps going, man. There's uh, Mars mm-hmm. pulled pry to the top and hit a blue thunder bomb off the top rope as a tribute to his boy for thickness. Um, just uh, Pride gets the tax out at one point, and oh oh, Mars stops the stomp into the tax. Pops uh, Pride up and power bombs him onto the tax, and yeah. no. <laughs> I was hoping there were Legos, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was hoping for Lego. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Uh, Thad ends up actually pulling Pride out of the ring to get him uh, on his feet, so he's on his feet on the floor uh, before the ten count off the off the power bomb into the tax. Um, Pride ends up pulling Thad in. He hits him with the TKO in the ring. Uh, Pride gets in just just walloping Mars with that seven share. Mars Mars gets up at seven. Uh, they each go for finishers. Mars gets uh, Pride. Hits Pride with Pride's own stomp. But Pride gets up at seven. So just I love the symbolism of them both getting up at seven. Um, mm-hmm. Mars uses a chair, but Pride like begs him off. Uh, 
he tries to use the, this metal rod that Mars had pulled up, brought out in the, earlier in the match, but gets stopped. Like gets kicked, uh, probably gets kicked in the balls. Mars just wallops pride over the head with the chair. Uh, he stops the 10 count, uh, places the chair, hits a package pile driver onto the chair and Ben Omen counts to 10 and Mars retains the LPW grand championship. Like just, mm-hmm. that was so good. Astrid, you can start on this one, girl. Uh, this one, I, Mars here, I enjoyed his performance so much during this too. And the way he just threw pride on those thumbtacks, it, it definitely hurt me. And, and I was and I was in the audience. Uh, but I love the fact that being a last man standing, they were able to use the space that they had in there. They went obviously from the ring to like the audience to like the part where we were and even back down again. So being so close to the action was something that was very like nice to see it happen there as well. And just the moments here and there that you know pride is going after mars in such a way in the storytelling they have with each other here it was that it was just incredible to watch it and just like those moments that pride is like being so vicious uh, towards mars and mars is like little by little gaining that viciousness throughout the match it was wonderful and the way he braced himself with a candlestick it was like that even hurt me as well watching it and that is being needed to the chairs and the audience and even being thrown into the thumbtacks that was amazing to watch as well and seeing him in an action there in person but again this was a great main event all around mm-hmm. yep. i agree i agree uh you know what i'm gonna comment on fracking promos holy hot diggity dang not only did both of these guys put out promos they put out video packages LPW put out video package. Man, they made this something that you wanted to see. And the crowd was excited for it by the time we got it. And like, oh man, I gotta say, like that was something I noticed about the whole show, actually. Just an overall view real quick. All the important, most of the important people in the important matches cut promos. And it really, for me as a fan of this company and of this show, it helped tie in a lot of things in between that month to month show. And I love and appreciate it. But back to this match. Um, as Astrid said, Mars really did build up his his kind of savagery as this match kind of happened. We're used to seeing that crazy confidence out of Mars right now, but this was a slow build for him to kind of combat that, I would say almost overconfidence of pride going into this one. Um I appreciated the uh, the fun look that Pride had going into this one with that mask. Ooh, that was creepy. Yeah. Very, very creepy. Very, very cool. And I appreciated that Thad also did the same kind of eye makeup. Mm-hmm. Even though it was kind of behind his glasses a little bit, you could see it was there and it kind of added a different level because now we're seeing a different level of Thaddeus. Because Thaddeus was a bad guy on the on the seven faction as it was but now we're seeing him act just as mean and just as vicious as pride in his mannerisms and actions and i love the change i'm kind of loving it um i'm not mad that that mars retained but i definitely would have feelings that it might be a title change in this one i'm not mad mm. that it didn't but this was a this was giving me vibes that this might be Pride's time. There's still time, though. Yeah, so Pride does uh, cut a promo, a little starts cutting a little promo after the match, uh, just saying it, it's it's this is done. And then to me, it's some somewhat familiar music to me and Melville, and maybe to Astrid, depending on if he uses that one in ROH, uh, plays. And a video package starts. And Mel, I hear Melba go, is that Jordan Oliver? And I go, it's Blake Christian. <laughs> we got to give me a little break here, okay? All I saw I was know, a I man know. bun and someone flipping off the ropes. Jordan Oliver does this as well. And yes, I'm aware he has a knee injury. I just, you know, I you admit know, I was the Lulu in my Kuflu. He could have been recovered from it by now. It, it's very possible. It's. I mean, if you follow him on his social media, he is working very, very hard, posting a lot of physiotherapy videos on a regular basis about his improvement. So you never know. 
Yeah. Never know. So me, so we're getting a, to see our third NJPW person this year after Leo Rush at RCW and Royce Isaacs earlier this year at LPW. We're getting to see Blake Christian take on Mars the Specialist. I'm so freaking excited. Melville is going to cosplay with the broken boot. <laughs> Wait, what? No, no, don't give the people an expectation that I can't attain to by the end. How am I going to get gear? He has a very specific gear look. It's essentially Shawn Michaels uh, with a, and he has a broken boot. With, with a broken boot? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It, it's, it's a bunch of hearts on his tights. That's what Shawn Michaels wore. That is fair. I can't, I can't argue with that. <laughs> Just stick a bunch of uh, hearts on 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 a pair of leggings and get a broken boot. You're Blake Christian. I'll get I'll get I'll ask Jason to help me build my costume. Uh, I, dude, I would love to see Jason build you a Blake Christian costume. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it happen. Oh, uh, uh, maybe we can get him to go as Megan Bain. <laughs> two GCW I would going. live. I would live for that. <laughs> oh, sweet uh, mercy. That'd be great. And then uh, there is a couple more announcements made. Ali Cash is returning on October 25th. Also, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing her. Seeing her a few times now. And I, I, she delivers every time she shows up. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, IWS Canadian Champion. Matt Viviani coming to Edmonton. Let's go. I'm not super familiar with him, but I'm I'm ready to see uh, some more people coming out from other places. I'm down. I'm always down for that. Did you say you knew him? I I know I seen him uh, here and there when streaming. He's a super nice guy, but I I I, I want to see what his character is like when he wrestles. I haven't seen him wrestle yet, so I'll I'll be tuning in IWTV at least to watch it. <laughs> Uh, Ed tuned in and saw my bald ass head. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> he did. He did. Uh, and then finally, they did announce on social media that Eli Serge will be returning. Where is he? Well, he'll be at LPW thirty one. It's Diary of a Mad Grappler is the name of the show, and actually, mm -hmm. the poster had uh, pride on it, like going like, like yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. looking um, like. Uh, What's that? What's that old wrestler? Uh, something George. Uh, George. Like any of George them Animal in Steel? the twenties. I was thinking George Animal <laughs> Steel. Is what I was thinking, but yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, what I really like about the next show is the irony of the number of shows, and the month and time that it's happening. Oh, mm -hmm. that is genius! I love that. Right? I just... It just worked out so perfectly. <laughs> that's true. I. I just noticed that. That is insane. That that I was happened. talking to Nathan about that on, on Saturday at our next show that we'll be talking about. And yeah, he's like, I didn't even realize that. I'm like, man, it was the first thing I noticed. <laughs> ADHD. Well, you're all about the spooky ooky-ish, so I'm not surprised. That's true. And That's then, true. We then, have spent the whole day watching spooky shit. There you go. And then uh, after the show, my shame came in full circle. Came in. Uh, well, this is where my shame, this is where two thirds <laughs> comes from. Mel, Mel and Ash decided to get a picture with Katrina Creed, and I took it. Mm -hmm. um, you sure did. I, I don't understand filters on iPhones, I guess, because this is what I did. Ah. Uh, It's great as it was the one time we chose not to check the photos before leaving, so we didn't notice until the car ride home. At which point we, we it was beyond we couldn't fix it. So we 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 found it hilarious. We were laughing so hard we were crying. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> you two were there like howling in the back. I got Andreas <laughs> beside me beside me snickering while I'm driving, and I'm like. Oh, don't I feel special right now? <laughs> I mean, you're the reason why we were laughing so hard we were crying. So, you know, oh, I feel so that's a good thing, I guess. You created a moment. <laughs> I feel so special. I feel so loved. Yeah. <laughs> Andre two-thirds. Uh, two-thirds Andre C.
But I've had enough of this abuse, so we're going to get the heck out of here. Oh, my face uh, oh. Usually I kick it off, but I'm going to let Astrid kick it off. Astrid, please tell us where we can find you. Uh, you can find me by Twitter, Blue Skies, Astrid Pizarro, Instagram and Threads, Astrid Pizarro 20. And you can find me on my YouTube channel, just like my name, which is Astrid Pizarro, as you see right there. I, I meant to make it a ticker, but it, I, I didn't click the ticker thing, I guess. Some, I I, 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 <laughs> there Some we bad. go. I was like, there we go. Until Andre there says he's bad at his job. See, I Somebody it. click that, please. <laughs> I, fixed, I fixed it. I, I say it every show I do is that I'm bad at my job. But every show I produce, I oh I say it. When I'm with Ed, I just let you him do. make all the mistakes and I just I just exist. I feel like I need to go through and find all the moments that you said you were bad at your job and just make a highlight reel of you being I'm bad at my job. Ooh. You you do you do you do great you do great highlights on your phone. Do that. <laughs> I do. Uh you find me on the x at that kind of guy tiktok instagram and threads at that candidate dude you can find me on oh, um, i had the, the double one of us uh you can find me on facebook at andre and malba wrestling talk and you can find me on our you right here on our youtube page or over on our youtube page at youtube.com slash at andre and malba wrestling talk you can also find me and Melbo with all of our Japanese wrestling content over on A Plus Productions. You can check them out A Plus Productions on Facebook on Facebook or A Plus Productions.com. Check them out. They're the sports feed, the entertainment feed, and the wrestling feed. So you don't have to listen to everything. And you can find me uh, this coming, hopefully Wednesday night. We're going to aim for about 1030 Eastern. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Our Local Establishment. Um, uh, and on uh, YouTube.com slash at Our Local Establishment. We're going to be doing Marble Talk. We're going to be back talking the uh, episode four of Agatha All Along. Yeah, four. Because we did the first one was one and two. Yeah, the episode four of Agatha All Along. No, that's five. <laughs> when you do that, it's five. Well, yeah, sorry, like the horseman, like the horseman, the four, the four horsemen. There you go. Or the foursome four. If anybody remembers that from TNA? The foursome four. I thought it was fortune it, it, four. Fortune, that's it. Fortune. Yeah, there it is. I got it wrong. See, I'm bad at my job. I tell, I tell you every week, I'm bad at my job. Oh, you yeah. also we'll kick you up, but I don't have the power because it's not my laptop. <laughs> you can also find me. <laughs> Mel and Astrid over at Backbreaker Video or Mike Simulcast. A lot of our stuff, youtube.com slash at Backbreaker Video. Uh, you can find him doing his live stuff over twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref, AEW Watch Longs every Wednesday, Saturday, and pay per view Sunday or pay per view Saturdays as it's going to be looking like in for Wrestle Dream. And uh, you can also check him out gaming every other day of the week and all the gaming replays at youtube.com slash at Backbreaker underscore gaming, where you can find content from him, Mr. PJC. This little dude right here, Rick Jules, who we did see yesterday and we will be talking about on the next episode of Chop Talk and their frequent guest. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. We love Kayla J here. <laughs> You're still Jane? You're still Jane? Jane? My J's yeah. become heart. My J becomes so heart. Jay. My J oh, became heart. Oh, look at that. Or an upside down spade. Melba, where can they find you? If you're wanting to follow a Melba, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melba. You can follow her on everything else Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Melba Collins. You can also find me on our local establishments programming, Japanese Wrestling Update with this guy over here. There's usually more screen. Every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Unless it's not. And then we'll let you know on social media. I believe this week is going to be a live episode. We have nothing going on this weekend in professional wrestling locally. They're all elsewhere. Um, I think. Yeah. Yeah, they're 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 traveling far and away. So we will be live 8 p.m. Mountain Time with a Astrid's favorite word plethora of topics to <laughs> <laughs> from Japanese professional wrestling. Oh, you can also find me on Astro Pizarro's 
YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. Where we should we got to get on that, girl. We got to do another episode. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. So stay tuned to our socials to find out when that is going to be coming out. If you are wanting to watch a Love Pro Wrestling show, we will leave a link in the description box below. You can go to their website, lovewrestling.ca, where you can get uh, t links to all of their ticket information. You can buy tickets short of show. You can buy a yearly subscription. It's completely up to you. So go check out those options. And while you are there, you can also check out the links to the school. <laughs> clandestine wrestling society where you can work with people like michael electric blaze stephen crow and b rackerani so go check that out um and what andre you know what this one is if you're wanting to watch lpw live you can go to independentwrestling.tv andre how much is a su subscription it's 10 oh, 10 canadian shout out sean spears I'm waiting. Yes. <laughs> uh, Completely covers Mel Ball this time. I, I, yeah, that's probably for the better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oof, go check that out. Oh, we're going to get banned. You show a little dick on screen, Andre. Uh, uh, Andre. My trusted friend and colleague, do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? I just want to say thank you all for showing up. Uh, please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Don't forget to share us out to your friends, family, and uh, all those who drive uh, full province over to visit their friend for the first time. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Oh, and that being said, I am your Malva. Over there is Andre, and over here is Astrid. We the will see you next. You should, the queen, yes, you turned right off. We will see you next time. Mwah.